the 22nd of November 2022. I'm glad that you're joining us this morning from wherever you're waking up to today. A very beautiful day. A bit, of course, gray and overcast right now. Morning has broken and you're bang on time for Morning Prime here on KTN News. And today is Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have Siasa Fiesta coming your way where we take a critical analysis of the politics of the day. So this week is a very big week, especially coming on Thursday, where we shall be having the JLAC, that is the Justice Legislative, of course, Assembly Committee that will be constituting to hear the four petitioners, all the petitions that we have already that seeks to ouster the IBC4, that is the Cherera 4, as they call it, and right now we have also the other side of Azimio, which is raising hesitation towards this particular day. They say there was no consensus in regard to, of course, having Thursday to be the day where or when the hearing will be done. So what does it really portend for the Cherera Fall? And this, of course, is everyone's interest because of what happened on August in the 9th in regard to the general election of after we had the announcement during that particular season of the elections so far. The GMO continues to spark a lot of debate right now. There's a U-turn from the CS of course uh, of trade. This is Moses Kuria with his pronouncement about the importation of this. He says now we'll be buying a bulk of it from the farmers. But was that statement from him called for? This is what people are really talking about. And is Ruto really being shoehorned by the West, right, we've seen there's a complete U-turn from the East, that is China, and now it is the West. And we saw a headline yesterday on the front page of the standard that is being puppeteered by the West, or is he? That is the probing question. We shall be seeking to answer this, of course, with our panelists here this morning. Up and early, I have Farah Malim, who is fresh off from the dab. And just to tell us what's happening on the ground with his constituency right now, with the biting hunger, uh, how is it on the ground? It's good to hear from you. Good to, good to see you, Farah. Good morning. See you. Morning. This time, today I'm the today first. You're, today you're the first one. Six <laughs> o'clock on the nose. Congratulations. It seems you've not slept. You're on the road yesterday. Yeah, I was on the road last night, yes. yes. And I didn't come from Ladab. I came from, I came from Lagdera. Oh, Lagdera. Lagdera and Ladab used to be one constituency called Ladab and then it was split in two. Mm -hmm. I represented it for two terms. Uh -huh. um, and Ladab is now, we, 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 we created Ladab in the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. like basically, the additional constituency when we created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 2013 is when we've had the first MP for Ladab. Uh -huh. I made a choice and ended up in the up and that's the way I represent. Now, I represent both. Mm. They're both my home. So you straddle between I, the DAP well, and the I, I, I have no boundaries on the three constituencies, the DAP, uh, like there, looking, and, and Gariza. And Gariza. And Gariza. Well. Gariza <laughs> but looking at the expanse of the DAP, yeah, uh, yeah. it is a huge one. Good, a huge huh? one, good we, one. I mean, basically, we have... We have uh, we have uh, achieved, I can tell you, tell you lips and, and bounds over the last well, about 20 years. Mm -hmm. We did well, we did well. We did well. We, yeah, we, in terms of poverty index, I think we are the, the highest in the whole of the region, all of the municipal province. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we, we have a few challenges. We're getting a lot of problems from the eastern side, the solar side these days. The bandits who come and take our camels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always maintain that, uh, let's see how much peace we can create between the two communities that are basically brotherly. Mm -hmm. uh, well, mm -hmm. And I've lived together for, God knows, for, the, for, for, for eternity. Mm -hmm. And we'll still live together, but there are a few, few issues which we'll deal with. Mm -hmm. So we're doing well, we're doing well, other than those uh, small, small uh, incidents of uh, uh, cattle and camel and goods rustling. Yes. Uh, we, we're doing well on, on many, 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 many places. But we were in a place called Malimin. Malimin. For me, it was very, very, very emotional because I created Malim, Malimin mm -hmm. as a center mm -hmm. in 1993, in my mm -hmm. first time in the seventh parliament. Mm -hmm. And when I saw how much it has grown, uh, I've also been associated with it throughout. Mm -hmm. I was, I was very, very happy. And that's where we took the deputy president oh, of the Republic of Kenya. Mm -hmm to launch what you call the, the flash uh, appeal uh, to support up to almost 4 million Kenyans who are faced with uh, starvation. Flash appeal? Flash appeal. Mm -hmm. Flash appeal. Lightning appeal, you know, oh, the whole okay. world. All right, all right. The whole right. world. 
and uh, I mean, the media was there from all over. Mm. Uh, the UN agencies were there. Mm -hmm. uh, the UN office here, the coordinator was there. Mm -hmm. The UNDP were there. United, United Nations Environmental Program was there because these things are happening as a result of climate change. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of support uh, from the globe. The governor of Wajir also was there. Uh, the governor of Gariza, of course, was the host. Mm. So, so with uh, Nadif Jama, uh, we we were we were we were. It, it was a good thing. It right. Good thing. And it, Looks it, like it was a uh, whole consolation uh, of uh, you know leaders around uh, the region as well. Uh, yeah, and Rigade was there. Uh -huh. In in, 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 in in his usual element. <laughs> <laughs> in his usual element. Very, uh, you know. Outspoken, outspoken, yeah. headstrong, yes. and gave a lot of instructions. I mean, he's 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 good. He's good. He's yeah. I can tell you, he, he's he intends to achieve a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and politics is over. I was not supporting him for the presidency. I was supporting Ilo Odinga for the presidency. Yeah. But, but now we we are we've, we've gone over that. We're seeking delivery now. So we want the government to deliver. Is, is and, it, yeah. and we don't want to become a lot of roadblocks. You see, let me tell you one thing. Eh? When you uh, conclude an election, mm. allow the people who have come in. A space a, at a least. space for them and headroom for them to work headroom for them to work and, and let them proceed on and work work Indeed. and work very good yeah and, All right. and, and for us in the opposition the, the challenge right now is how many pieces of legislation can we bring that is not parochial that is not a narrow uh, party centered and party contestations and the rest of it but that's global it's for Indeed. the nation itself thank you and we allow them time to to perform then we judge them you know after a year or two years is when we decide they performed and this is the scorecard yeah or they have not performed and judging them is what also we do have on the front page of uh, the dailies today where they critically look at uh, what is happening especially now with the maize uh, debate and the gmo this is what you're waking up to on the front page of the standard today the maize rebellion that is a splash and of course you know the story since yesterday and the gmo's pronouncements uh, uh, of, of the imputation into the country by the cs uh, uh, trade Moses Courier. So we have the reactions here. Moses Courier, here he says, Government of Kenya will not buy maize directly or indirectly, I should say, other than for the strategic reserve. The Gazette notice we will release today will open the market to millers and anyone to import maize duty free for six months. Also, we have His Grace, that is uh, the Archbishop. Let me try and uh, zoom out again. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anthony Muheria there, he's saying Kenyans deserve an apology. We shouldn't trivialize serious matters like GMOs, food security and farming. The lives of people are at stake. This issue of GMO is a discussion that deserves deep and fair engagement with scientists. We have Julius Ruto saying, I am against any move to import produce when local harvests have not been exhausted. And in case and in case of need to import, the ministry should make recommendations through the National Assembly. Also, we have David Kosing saying farmers are harvesting and they are expecting that their minister will have said, take your maize to NCPB. Who is Moses Courier representing? He might be representing some businessmen out there. This is some leaders who are reacting to, of course, the imposition of GMO. Input APRO, that is what the sub-headline is reading today. MPs from the Rift are up in arms of a government intention to import maize, saying move will hurt their constituents who are harvesting their crop at the moment. Clergy demand apology from trade seers over GMO remarks. You have the story well spread for you on page 6 and 13 of the Standard today. And Mugo Wairemo, you remember this man? A danger to society who dragged women sentenced to 32 years for operating a legal clinic and administrating drugs to women with intention to rep. You have the story on page 3 of the standard today of loose tongues and lessons for Ruto on loyalist. That is a story that you want to follow there on page 12. And uh, this you can remember Faramal, uh, Peter yes. Oloa Ringo. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. How do you remember him today? I think today is well, commenting on that. I remember him because yeah. of... Um, uh, you know the. You remember the very well the. What what did he say? The, what did he say of peace? I am trying to remember the word he said. Uh, he didn't say the angel. Did he say? He didn't say the saint. Something of peace. The prince of peace. Did he say? 
I can't remember. Uh, as something that basically is associated more with Jesus Christ than anything else, but he mm. just described it as Moi. So, so, so it, Jesus it, Christ, it, the Prince of Peace? No, no, uh. something of peace. I'm trying to remember that. I'll when you recollect, you'll tell us. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, no, 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 well, so what, what basically needs is talk, we're talking about right now is lose tongues. Mm, lose tongues. Lose tongues. I mean, this is one area where politicians need to be very, very careful. Don't get carried away with the excitement, mm -hmm. the exaltations of a victory when somebody is riding, because this is, it always goes up and down. Indeed. There's only matter of time again, things will be looking different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, uh, I think you say the Prince of Peace. Anyway, whatever it is. So, so, so basically what we, are, what we are looking at now is uh, uh, members of the, the, the ruling party and the ruling coalition, I might say, Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh, uh, too much into into the psychophancy for the presidency, you know what I mean? Mm. William Ruto, William Samoy Ruto, William Samoy Ruto, and, and then give him, give him status. It's, it's all fair to respect mm. your leaders very much mm. and, and, and allow them to, but then don't overdo it. Don't overdo that's, it. That's the point, yeah. And then for some other things, I, I think it was a bit of a joke which was taken out of context. My friend Moses Kurias, he, he was trying to, he was trying to be a little bit comical when he said Kenyans die from many things. And GMO is one thing that could, they could also die from. You know what I mean? But, but you don't, you don't, you don't make, you don't make comedy with the... Yeah. But he's, he's, uh, you know, the big one. Now we have Moheria, yeah. uh, is, uh, is, is Grace Moheria asking him to apologize to the country. Well, I think he's going to apologize and yeah, people will move on and it's, it's, not, it's not a big thing. I think he was, he, he did it like a bit of a comical thing. Let me be honest with you on this. I don't think he intended to be very serious about it, but it has kick-started a debate, which mm -hmm. is very important. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need to uh, be in that kind of a natural you know, element out with, with a little protocol in there for people to really get and deep dive, dive, dive deep into that for them to be able to bring out the facts. So you start. So, so right now there's a massive interest in GMO mm. and, and Kenyans before the end of next week will be so well educated. Every Kenyan will know everything, everything that needs mm -hmm. to be known about GMO, which is good in my opinion. I'm, I'm, I don't see anything wrong with that. Thank you. Uh, and, and I think the other thing, the thing that really uh, asks everybody and, and bothers me mm. is that somehow, somehow the international community through the UN has perfected a system in which when we have a bumper harvest, they bring us free food. And they say, let the market, let the, let the, allow the market the freedom for it to operate itself. So when you have free food, the farmers lose. Mm -hmm. They are able to fetch less than their cost. So they're not encouraged to plan the next harvest. Mm -hmm. you, you get my point? Yeah. When we then had, are not able to plant sufficient because the farmers are discouraged, is when they, they stop what you call any support in terms of free food from outside. Mm -hmm. Then we are forced to go and import from outside. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They do that not just to Kenya, they do it to Somalia, they do it to Ethiopia, they do it to all the countries here. They give food aid as a very strategic thing to try and limit the capacity of your own internal productivity mm. as well as your internal uh, trade. For them, it's different. For them, they have their guaranteed minimum returns. Mm -hmm. Farmers in Europe and America and the rest of them are not there to be dictated by, by the market economics and, and basically the market forces and, and for there to be a free what do you call uh, 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 removal of tariff and non-tariff barriers to importation. Mm. They want us to open up our markets. You get my point? Mm. Remove all tariff and non-tariff barriers, but then allow, uh, uh, but we can then break into their own markets. Mm -hmm. If you want to now ex import, export uh, sugar to, to, to Europe and America and the rest of it, you can't. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I mean? Mm. If you want to export maize, you can't. Whatever you want to export, you can't. But then uh, somehow they are, uh, and I think uh, the, the, the continent must wisen up to understand that there is nothing, there is nothing strategically long-term beneficial to this continent that comes from the continent that has traditionally, historically, perennially always dominated us in one way or the other, from mm. colonization to slavery to exploitation to basically what's right now happening mm. in our own continent mm. as a result of them. 
And I, I don't blame them because, you see, if their survival dictates that they have to destroy others in the manner they're destroying, and this time not in the way they used to come up with their own gunpowder and, um, you know, superior firepower and did what they did to us in those hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you have to understand nothing good can come from there other than what's there for the interest. Look at the cocoa war, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look at the, the, the diamonds, the gold, the stuff that goes out of the DRC every, every, every day. In the, in the hundreds of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. you, you get my point. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening right now in the in the in, in, in Ethiopia. It has nothing to do other than the massive oil and gas resources and all sorts of minerals that are in Ethiopia. India. Look at what's happening in Somalia. It has nothing to do other than this, those massive gas and oil offshore, onshore, marine resources, strategic location, the, the straight to what you call uh, uh, the Suez Canal, the major sea lands of, uh, and that's why they use uh, small, you know, uh, machineries like Dubai and, and Saudi Arabia and other people to mm -hmm. wreak havoc in, in the continent, whether it's in Libya, and you get my point. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, they have perfected the art of trying to acquire our resources in the cheapest possible way and creating conflicts in our own system. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Farah. Uh, yes, and this is on the standard. Just to continue with uh, the paper review and looking at other dailies as well as commenting on uh, the maize rebellion. That is a splash on the front page of the standard today. We need promises to champion ESC integration, right? She's checking into place right now amongst the, the other eight who were of course, elected by the National Assembly to represent Kenya in the East Africa Legislative Assembly. We have that story tucked away on page 7 of the Standard today. State agencies defy austerity measures. You know, despite the fact that uh, we need to save 300 billion shillings, they continue pace with their spendings as well. NASA's Orion arrives in the moon. Uh, you have that on page 23 of the Standard today. Saka shines in England route of Iran. You have that story tucked away on page 36 of the Standard this morning. Let's move on and see what we have on the front page of the Daily Nation. Root of plots to take full control of Parliament. That is a splash today. Root of plots to take full control of Parliament. Numbers Jubilee Party MPs targeted in strategy to give the ruling party more support in houses. What the flag is reading on top there. Having won over 10 of 12 of the 12 independent lawmakers Kenya Kwanzaa strategists see the possibility of bridging the 44-member gap to a two-thirds majority that will guarantee President William Ruto's coalition an easy time in passing key legislation to support his agenda as well as powers to approve or reject changes to the Constitution. And that story continues on page 4 and 5 of the Daily Nation today. How was it yesterday? Senegal fall to Dutch opponents in Qatar. Right, this is all about the 2022 FIFA World Cup, and you can see them in action here. Senegalese forward, this is Crepin Diata uh, fighting for the ball with Netherlands defender Delhi Blind yesterday during their Group A match of the 2022 FIFA World Cup at the Al, Al Duma Stadium in Doha. The Netherlands won 2 0, right? We about to rough, uh, of course, to uh, a bad start there in Qatar as uh, the continent of Africa. 16 days to, of, that is something else there, just uh, not really related to the World Cup. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know, Farah, what, what uh, team you're representing? Are you watching the World Cup with uh, Maura here as well? <laughs> I don't know I, if he's I, a football I, fan. I, I had a lot of uh, hopes in uh, Senegal. In Senegal. But he's not... Uh, I still do, I still yeah, do. Okay. I still do. This mm -hmm. is the beginning. Uh, and, and, and I think there are a few African, uh, a few African uh, giants that we expect to pull off a surprise. Senegal, mm. I think Cameroon, mm. and a number of others. So we, we, we're hoping. So it's still, still early, still early. Still early, still early. Still early. We, 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 we are Africans. We, 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 we pick up slowly. But once we take the... So we're still building the momentum. Once we get the tempo, uh -huh. we all keep jogging one way or the other. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a marathon. Well, it's, it's a, a marathon. Street. It's a yeah. marathon. It's all a right. marathon, yes. So, yeah, you have the, the Daily Nation also there with the Healthy Nation, Green Young. I think this is uh, the face of Olive Barrows there. Uh, you could read all about her. And Green Young, as uh, mentioned there, Kenya's big delegation to climate conference. We had the biggest delegation, I'm telling you, uh, for this climate conference. 
the saying here, according to the United Nations provincial list of the people who attended the COP27 in Sham El Sheikh, Kenya sent 386 participants, the second largest delegation in Africa. The Kenyan delegation was the fourth largest globally for the world event that had 33,000 delegates. It's, it's, not all, yeah, it's not all from the government. You know, the presumption is... It could also be from uh, yeah. the civil society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The presumption right now is that uh, a lot of taxpayers' money was used there. I don't think that my taxpayers' money was used very, mm. very... Mm. The bulk of them are these active civil society. Thank you. L let me hear from uh, Maura and Dr. Nika. I think, uh, I think, Isaac, what a good to see you. Today, uh, you know, Father Malin beat you to the punch. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last well. week, the one who came Malin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed by some few minutes. A few minutes, yes, indeed. Yeah, let me, let me say that, um, yeah, it's always the case, by the way. Kenya always has the highest number of people. I remember we went to the National Council of State Legislatures, the National Conference, or whatever, this Council Conference, in, in uh, Chicago, Illinois, sometimes back. And uh, uh, we were the biggest a delegation outside of America. Of course, it was an American event. So it needs to be capped. I may have a submission. We are spending a lot of money on those uh, foreign trips, and uh, the dividend is very low. Of course, one can argue that our president is actually the chair of the Committee on Climate Change for African Heads of States. Uh, so that could justify. But still, it's, it's, it's a malaise that we need to cure. Uh, of course, Kenya participates very highly and is very well represented. Uh, internationally, but we could do better with fewer numbers so that we redirect its resources to uh, better use here in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Dr. Nikau? Well, I think uh, considering the uh, population, the world population, I think that number is too large, uh, but I would like to know uh, how many are from the government and government sponsored, how many for, from the civil society. I think I've been to such meetings and you often get a very large number of the civil society delegation. Then it brings the issue that you have a large number of the civil uh, society organizations. The question is, are these organizations really contributing to our welfare and to our development and mm -hmm. in, in such areas? Or are people going on, on uh, leisure trips? I think that's what we need to answer. The on the part of the government, if the delegation is large and well organized in instances where there are very tense negotiations, it's good because you then just uh, people negotiate late in, into, the, into the night and therefore you can switch teams. Thank you. The U.S. does that, but it's something we need to look at. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Let's continue with uh, the Daily's Root plots to take full control, as I've mentioned of parliament that is a story that you want to follow inside the daily nation this morning now baby pendo new evidence implicating top cops emerges on baby pendo's uh, you remember baby pendo in 2017 at the general election that uh, she was killed by a stray bullet they were perusing the file prosecutor asks court to defer officers plea taking and this story is tucked away on page four and five of the star this morning you can continue with it Okashawa's spirited effort to dislodge uhuru as mount kenya or political kingpin it says here dr rigathi gashago has started an aggressive campaign to dislodge retired president uhuru kenyatta as the mount kenya political kingpin in the recent weeks the dp has been on a back-to-back -back offensive in the vote rich region a meeting and wooing Uhuru's troops in efforts to fill the void created by Uhuru's departure. That is a story that you want to follow inside the star on page six this morning. Also standing tall, proud and dangerous, gone the next minute. That is a story that we've been waiting, like a shoe waiting to drop heavy at the time when it comes to construction. And this is what we've been seeing yesterday. We had another one going down. And this is happening in Kiambu County. I think the governor has his work really cut out. This is Kimani Omatangi. The railroad building is pictured. After tenants were evacuated on Sunday, and after it collapsed yesterday morning, right? Uh, this story continues inside the star this morning. So what is really happening with Kiambu 
Is it because of the rainy season that now the integrity of its structures are compromised? Well, they're here to tell us. All right, grade seven learners to stay in primary. That is the splash today on People Daily, CBC leakage. Curriculum review team will recommend to president that junior secondary should be renamed upper primary to avert transition crisis. The story continues on page four of the People Daily this morning. Ruto man beats retreat on JMO. All about Moses Courier. CS says government will buy 52 million bags from local farmers as political storm over plans, over plans to import grains in face of hunger. That story on page four today. Also, not so merry at Christmas. Families expected to spend 17% less this festive season. And also you can grab a copy of the standard this morning where the financial standard is focusing on that. Not so merry Christmas fest with an unprecedented cost of living crisis. Many households are cutting down on their festive season, spending in a major blow to businesses. You have the story on page four and five of the People Daily this morning. JMO, Kifo Auhai, Yon Yoswali, Habari Kamili, Ukurasa Mbili, Wapili wa Taifa Leo. It says there on top as a flagger, Wanasayansi, wa Tofautiana Kuhusu Ufaafu, wa Chakula Kilicho Badilishwa Maumbile. That is JMO. You can follow the story on page two of Taifa Leo this morning. And also, Kombe la Dunia. We have Timu Yapilia Warabuni Yalala. You can follow the story on page 19. And Vua Yaleta Afueni. You can see Safara Wangamia. Wakitembea Kwenye Barabara Yalamia Salaget Malindi. Katika County ya Kilifi. Kwenda Kutafuta Malisho. Ilikuwa ni Afueni Baada ya Mvua Kwanza Kunyesha Eneo Hilo. Baada ya Kiangazi Cha Mdamrefu. So we thank God for the rains there. That is Taifa Leo. Buckle down to some business. Uhuru Ruto bust budget by 5 billion shillings during transition. And polls, state house, DP office exceeds expenditure by 86%. Treasury did not disclose reasons for spending spree. And yeah, that story tucked on page two of the business daily this morning. Safaricom bongo points to expire as unclaimed liabilities hit 4.5 billion shillings. Let's just read on what it says here. It says Safaricom has introduced an expiry date on its loyalty program popularly known as bongo pins in a bid to encourage redemption and unlock the underlying revenue that totaled 4.5 billion shillings as at march this year the listed telco has told subscribers that all unredeemed bongo points will now be expiring after three years meaning that those accumulated before december 31st 2019 will expire effective january 2023 safaricom time the move to put an expiry date on the loyalty points a business decision aimed at encouraging redemption Right, I don't know if that can be claimed by the assets authority. Will it be claimed by the assets authority if you don't? Yeah, yeah, I'm inclined to wonder most of you here if you really claim this bonga pens. Uh, um, you don't claim it, no, I, so you don't. So, the time actually, I there's a time I had uh, I had so much bonga uh, points, so much. I mean, at least two million Kenyan shillings worth of because those are two million, yes, because I had not claimed for something like 15 years or something 15 like that. Years. And then it was stolen by one of those uh, workers of Safaricom because I told him, you know, because they were giving some, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, <laughs> computers and other things and the rest. He just picked it from me and played around with it. And at the end of the day, I had nothing in there. Wow. Wow. And it was the deputy so, uh, Yeah, I'm here to know. No, they, they're, they're cooks. Uh, they're cooks the meantime, continue the paper, yeah, you can everywhere. just be heading over to your Bonga Points uh, account to see yeah. how much uh, is stashed away there. Yeah. Right. No, 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 also, we'll treasury we'll overdrafts in CBK hit uh, 67.33 billion shillings as cash crunch bites. MPs debate JMO May's imports today. This is what will be happening in Parliament this morning. Uh, Farah Malim also. Dr. Nikal, you'll be debating JMO? Yep, it's a thing. It's in the program. Is it the program? Mm. Is it for today or tomorrow? I'm not quite sure. I know today. that's coming. Today. It says Parliament today. will this not afternoon today. hear a petition, a petition seeking to stop oh, yeah, a petition. Yeah, the planned it. importation of 10 million bags of GMO maize in efforts to protect farmers' earnings that will set the stage for further inflation uh, rally. But we've seen there's a U turn from the CS. Oh, yeah. All right, in Uganda, inside the battle for workers' union, that is a splash that you want to also read all about inside the Daily Monitor. And the citizen, why CCM elections matter before 2025? You can read all about it in the citizen in Tanzania. 
still there in Tanzania we have Mwananchi as well Rushwa CCM that is what we have as a splash there in Rwanda this is what you're waking up to new twist in she has said dispute as farmers want auction halted that story continues on page four of the new times in Rwanda Kagame roots for education for all uh, sustainability and we can see him here President Kagame and other dignitaries at a high level opening of a sustainable development goal pavilion and launch of a scoring the goals campaign in Doha Qatar on Monday uh, speaking at the event that took place a day after the official opening of the World Cup Kagame highlighted the importance role or the important role education plays toward ensuring sustainability which he said is at the heart of his government's investments decision read all about it inside the new times Looking at the East African this week, Air Tanzania grounds A22, A220s, I should say, and the ways option. Engine of the Airbus model have had the in-flight shutdowns, forcing maker to order inspections, disrupting AC or ATCLL's growth plan. That story continues on page four and five of the East African uh, this week. And of course, this is in line to uh, following that demise of the precision air that went on so the government is really keen also on the safety of these airlines as well kagame to urge m23 ceasefire that is a story that you want to follow inside page eight and nine and museveni rivals at ease in kenya we had them here bessie j and also bobby wine we can see head of people's front for transition He's a BCJ, founding leader of Alliance for National Transformation Uganda, uh, General Mugisha Muntu, leader of opposition in parliament, Winnie Kiza, and National Unity Platform leader Bobby Wine, with Kenya's Martha Karua at the Uganda Human Rights Accountability Conference in Nairobi. Follow that story inside the East African. All right, this is what we have as editor Katun. A good point to usher in when Jacob Moore here, looking at uh, the standard today, that is our editorial a cartoon that you can see there and uh, we had them we had a debate about Iala and uh, some of the, yeah that is a page 16 of the editorial page there so this is uh, Odinga Iala he won it but he's pulling the strings of his big shoes there as you can see it are you there that uh, you can see it or you can look at the screen there we which, have it. which which one which is the, the standard the standard there which page page uh, 14 sorry. Uh, okay. yeah uh, okay. page 14 Good morning, good to see you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so was a debate quite uh, <laughs> that uh, we saw it, it was very heated in Parliament. Your reaction, you as a chair of uh, the YALA, of course, uh, election committee. Thank you, and I am happy to see my colleagues here with Dr. Mm -hmm. And now I know Honorable Farah came early because you always <laughs> sit on this seat. <laughs> The speaker's seat. The I'm always a neighbor. <laughs> so at least uh, you will not tell him that he came late. But uh, let me say good morning to our viewers and mainly to Kipipiri uh, mm -hmm. citizens and my voters. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I spent quite uh, many hours with them, especially in the colonial village, mm -hmm. distributing food relief. And many Kenyans are wondering why are we giving food to Nyandarwa County. And I wish to confirm to them that we have thousands and thousands of colonial villages. Those people with small plots, they have no farms, they have been living on Kibarua mm -hmm. with the hard time and harsh economic times now. The Kibaruas are not there anymore. Mm. So they are almost sleeping hungry. And I tell you that really people appreciate. I saw old women, young children come for this food. And they were even telling me, God bless you. I was telling them, it's not mine, it's from the government. Mm -hmm. But you could see that really Kenyans are suffering. So we thank God that the rain has come. And I think uh, more discussion on, on GMO. Mm -hmm. My reaction on Yala is that uh, last week when we were here, we were dealing with the nominations, or rather nominee, the 15 of them. Mm -hmm. Azimio and uh, Kenya Kwanza. Now we are speaking of elected and uh, by virtue of being elected now there is no Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. Mm. Now is Yala Kenya team. Mm -hmm. The day and the minute they cross the border at Namanga, they cease to be from this party or this. Mm -hmm. They move as a Kenyan team, as one team, because they only secure the partner state called Kenya's interest. 
uh, the issue of uh, Odinga and Kalonzo's son, of course, was an issue. It has been an issue. But I want to look at it a bit objectively mm. and say Odinga, as a citizen, senior citizen in this country, mm -hmm. has his own rights mm -hmm. as Odinga. Kalonzo the same. Their children also have their own rights. Mm. And for me, it would be to defranchise their children if by virtue of being a daughter of so and so, you deny them the opportunity if they so qualify. However, coming uh, from this kind of big families, they have an upper hand than any other ordinary Kenyan. You, so, uh, you, you may not be aware, but the members are aware that I was really pushing on Abab Kadir as a second term member to go to Yala for purpose of uh, institutional, institutional memory. memory. Yeah. But he couldn't clinch the, the seat. So this tells me that uh, you can go back to Yala, a second term member, mm. if then you come from big families. But I want uh, the objectivity of each person, according to our constitution, the Bill of Rights, to be treated separately. Mm. If the, 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 the parents or the, the fathers and the mothers of these children find it fit to give other Kenyans a chance, mm -hmm. Fair enough, but if they feel that their children are also competitive and they come to us, I think as members we just look at it objectively and do the justice. So looking at that, you talk about uh, the shoes uh, that is actually being pulled here by uh, Winnie. <laughs> is, uh, she's yet to, of Maybe course, have a chance Maybe she's about to wear this shoe, but it looks a bit big and she is carrying it towards Iyala. Mm. <laughs> well, two issues about Yala, in my view. One, as you are saying, the, the children of, of people, prominent people. We, we have to be very careful here because these are people in their own right. They may have had advantages, their background, their education, and so on. So that adds up. And so when they present themselves, the fact that the name is known in any election, just that the name is known gives you some points. So they, they, they will always have that, that advantage. But remember that in some cases, these children also suffer reverse discrimination. The fact that people are now saying, why were they elected? And they're not asking, why were other people not elected? It's in, it's in itself a reverse discrimination. That's a new coinage of... Uh... Uh, reverse discrimination. Yeah, there's reverse discrimination because people discriminate against you because you, you, you are perceived or seen to be coming from an advantaged position and that's what you are, your family is prominent, for example. And because of that, now you are subjected even to more scrutiny. When you get something, people say you did get it uh, on your own right, on your own capability, you got it because of that. It, it, it's, it's worldwide, you know, when Kennedy's brother was appointed attorney general, he had the same issue and he, he explained, if my brother qualifies, does he now lose his right as an American citizen to get that? So it is something you have to treat with, with, with some caution. The only thing is, if they're competent, they will. Like uh, the Kalonzo's son, he was there, uh, we didn't, they were with, with, with her, we didn't hear any adverse effects. He must, he must have performed. And so going there again, uh, we, we, we didn't see, uh, myself, yeah, yeah. I didn't see But that's the question. And I think, uh, Wanjiko, you've been there. Then how do we, how do we gauge, you know, their performance? <laughs> you know, all your performance in Yala. What is the metric so that we know you really passed master? Because you can hear even uh, with Dr. Nikali is struggling to say he may have performed because he's not really certain if he performed or not, right? So, so that we can give you, you know, uh, a second handy opportunity to actually represent us in... Uh, in interestingly, yeah, how, how do we gauge the success of a person at Iyala? Is interestingly, it? in the whole region, it's only Kenya, particularly the Kenya National Assembly, which doesn't measure the performance of Iyala. We have a committee called Regional Integration, mm -hmm. founded on one of our studying order. Maybe an uh, speaker can yes. guide me if it yes. is 225, or, yeah. but it is within 220. Yeah. And the main mandate of this committee is to, to, to link Yala and the National Assembly by way of getting the motions moved there, the reports moved there, any paper tabled there, 
and bring into the National Assembly. I can tell you during my time 11 in the Parliament, mm -hmm. because I served in the same committee with the Honorable Kajuju, who was my chair, mm -hmm. we did link the Parliament and Honorable Maura can attest to that. Mm -hmm. We brought many motions, we brought many debates. In fact, that is the time the monetary union was being crafted. Mm -hmm. And there was so much perception of Kenya as the big brother will be carrying Burundi and all this, and we interacted a lot with the, the, the big boys from the economic arena, particularly the central bank, and we were able to interact very well. So I think uh, time and again, uh, members do so vigorous activity to elect members of IALA, and it adds there. It adds. So luckily, now yeah. that I am there, and luckily I'm the chair, I'll continue linking, and we'll continue seeing what IALA is doing. Right, so speak on here. two points. Yes. You didn't listen to the second one. Okay. Something is worrying me about representation in Iala. Because when we go, you, you, you get this feeling, you are going to represent Kenya, you are going to represent Uganda, you are going to represent Tanzania. So you get something like an adversarial relationship. Like we, we, we are going to really fight for some piece of cake. Mm. But you, we must look at the origin of Iala. In fact, the first Iala election was in 1948. Actually, it was called Yakla. It was the East African Central Legislative Assembly. Again, I think there were about uh, 23 people. Now, uh, 16 were elected by the various, they were called Legikos assemblies in the three countries. And seven were appointed by the governors. And Kenya, I think, uh, the whole of East Africa, they had three. The idea was to create an integrated region so that we, we actually live and work as one. And that, to me, is getting lost. Uh, remember, after that 1948, a lot of great things happened. East Africa was basically one nation. We had one currency. Mm. I saw the East African shilling. Mm. We had the East African airways. We had East African railways and harbors. We had the University of East Africa. So that Nairobi was just a campus mainly for engineering. Uganda was a campus mainly for medicine. The Dar es Salaam was a campus mainly for law. And so the, there was even East African road services common, where buses were actually... Common services. Yeah, yeah. Called them East yeah. African common So all these things came as East African common services, including East African power and lighting, mm -hmm. East African posts and telecommunications, and you, you people moved from Tuara up to Gulu in a bus, and nobody asked you anything at the border. People went and sought jobs everywhere, and nobody asked you. Now, this building uh, where, where the, 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 the court is, the high court is, which is called community, the word community arises from the, the fact that it was the headquarters for East African Customs. Common Services. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Common the, 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 yes. Say, okay. well, that's why it's called common community. Mm -hmm. That's why it is called mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. community. Now, mm -hmm. most of them will be. We see, we are, like you say, <laughs> we are trying <laughs> to the get a uh, monetary union. Mm -hmm. That is something that was there. So, my, I would say, the bigger debate would be how do we quickly get people together? You go to a place like Migori. And people get flabbergasted if they are being stopped at the other end. I, there was a guy who was, that somebody was uh, arrested because he, he was carrying fish from Tanzania to Kenya <laughs> or the other way around. And he was told he was smuggling. He said, what, am I, what, what, what is smuggling? I bought my fish. I'm coming to sell it. <laughs> what am I <laughs> And remember, mm. even there was a East African um, Research Council, Health Research Council, mm. look at diseases. This is a don't know borders. So we need a surveillance. Professionals, I think the, 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 the medical profession were the first in 2005 to actually get common registration. So that if you are registered in Kenya, you should practice in Tanzania and so on. It is, after we did it, Burundi actually came in and Rwanda came in and said we want to join this. So as we go and we are doing, I think what the people need to go there, how quickly do you bring us together and get this big market? I have relatives in Tanzania who went to work there, but when now we started to split the countries, they had a choice. Now you either remain Tanzanian or come back to Kenya. 
they chose to remain in Tanzania. We met at Nairobi University as a Tanzanian, but his mother was living in our village. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I, I think this, uh, and in, in, in our colleagues' committee, we should start focusing a lot. How quickly do we bring this together? So that, and in the bigger context, Africa needs to move fast so that we create this big. Remember, uh, in, 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 the, in the 60s and late 50s, we were trying to get the Pan-African government. There was even an attempt, and I'll tell you when I read the story, that they were going to actually form a Pan-African government. When it failed, some presidents came with the, with the side of relief at least I'm still going home as a president. <laughs> <laughs> but I, th I think there's still, uh, we have the parliamentary parliament, yeah. Isaac Maura, you've been uh, yeah. association, uh, you the parliamentarian. So the bigger yeah, picture. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pan-African parliament, yes. I, I mean, and even uh, we, have, we have the representation. So here. was that mooted from what uh, Dr. Nishkal is telling us? Well, well, I, I'm not very sure, but it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really a legislative body for the, for the court, but it's not yet fully a legislative one. You couldn't say, for example, that whatever is passed at, uh, at, 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 in the, in the uh, Midrand in South Africa, uh, you know, transcends and it is supposed to be implemented. And that's the problem, I think, of regional parliament. SADC is also thinking of having their own, uh, you know, legislative uh, body. Uh, you know, they, they have a forum. I, I attended, I think, one uh, in 2019, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and and uh, by, the, uh, as a, by the way, I think Dr. Nikal would have made a very good candidate for Yala. He seems to know very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think, <laughs> <laughs> but I think. Um, so next time maybe. Uh, you should, yeah, you should, you, you should try. Yeah. 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 Don't forbid you if you don't uh, clinch it for uh, for Sam. I don't know if you're also planning for uh, to run for governor. Yeah, if uh, those are not the ambitions. Well, well, they, they, for, for, for governor, uh, the people of Kisumu can decide. <laughs> because, uh, because the current governor also comes from Seme. But uh, let me say that. Uh, <laughs> oh, Anyang Nyongo is from Seme. That's my constituent. Uh, yeah. is it, okay. Uh, I actually yeah. took over from him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he's my political mentor. So I think, um, uh, let me say that uh, this, 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 this uh, legislative assembly is very critical. Uh, and and I'm, very, I'm very happy to have my friend David Ole Sankok having been elected there as a person with disability. For me, that was a great win. And also, Falhada Iman Deko. We, we talked about them here. But I don't think it is right to have Winnie uh, portrayed as if now she's inheriting Raila Odinga in this cartoon. I think it's unfair. Uh, Winnie is there on her own right because uh, Raila Odinga is still alive. Uh, Winnie is just starting her political career as an elected uh, Yala member. It remains to be seen because even when Kennedy was elected last time, he's not gone ahead to replace Kalonzo. I mean, sometimes we don't hear people. In fact, uh, uh, most of the time when you go to Yala, people tend to kind of forget you. You know, your only stuff is if you come back home like Wajiko Mohe and you win a seat <laughs> and become the chair of the Regional Integration Committee. But, but this but, is the Odingas. Uh, no, no, it doesn't uh, matter, really. Because not necessarily Raila, but Uburu. Uh, well, even Aburu, really. Even, even he came back to become senator. But when he was there, we had very, very little of... of it's only that Win is young. And uh, she's uh, promising, like she can be, uh, you know, this leader uh, who can take over after the father. But it's not yet the case. You can only look at, uh, you know, maybe some fears. And also, I don't think this is hereditary <laughs> at the same time. Because, yeah. <laughs> but somebody else will emerge also mm -hmm. in, in the ensuing period. So I think, uh, you know, it's putting a lot of pressure on her so that she, she may, you know, you know, stand up to what she... Of course, it's a clear direction that maybe in that family, she's the one who should be the politician comparing to other children in that family. And that remains to be seen how that, uh, you know, process. But the question that maybe I would want to, to, to ask, and Honorable uh, Ajiko Moya is here, to what extent, if, for example, Yala passes a legislation, say, is on, say on people with disabilities, does it apply to all member states? If it goes to the Council of Ministers, then are they supposed to bring it to... Because I, I have been in the Senate and the National Assembly where we discuss reports of Yala and also of uh, PAP, Pan-African Parliament. And then, for example, there was a time I, I made a presentation uh, in South Africa, and I was very happy when I had uh, Abdullahi, the former senator for, uh, for, for Wajia, now mentioning my name in part of the report. You know, like, I, you know, like now, you know, it's like the work that I was doing was being reported to the senator that I, I was sitting at that point in time. So it's good, but then to what extent, and there should be a, a framework, you know, of assessing the, eff uh, the effectiveness of implementation. Parliaments generally have problems with implementation because it is the executive to do. In fact, if you look at how you know, motions are drafted, we add the government. But then we also need to see 
that these legislative bodies like Yala actually have an impact on the, on the society. I must confess we've made a lot of progress. The shilling, Dr. Nikal, really used to be the name of the currency of Britain before the pound was introduced. And in Kikuyu, people know very well that uh, uh, pound is actually 20 shillings, you see. So that's why you have the shilling. And of course, we fear, <laughs> for example... Yeah? Uh, Nipi pound. Uh, Nipi pound. <laughs> <laughs> 20 pound. But then, how do we make sure that, for example, if you look at the euro problem, and, and again, I come back to Moshimua and Jikomo here. Uh, we, we know, if you look at the euro, 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 euro currency, does Kenya lose value? Because if we, our currency is much stronger. I think three, four times than, than, uh, than uh, Uganda. I think more than tw twice or tw two and a half times than uh, Tanzania. How does it work out? Uh, if you look at the balance of trade, honestly, Tanzania mm. is just about to catch up with us. What are the competitive advantages? What are these uh, infrastructural projects? We now expect a pipeline uh, to bring gas from Tanzania here mm. because it's a better market. So those are some of the issues we need to look into. When are we going to have a political federation? Are we eventually going to have a, an African president? I wrote a very good article about uh, EEC uh, in the Star last Friday because that would be now really, really good. Would we also want to extend these IALA members to, be, to have some kind of citizen participation? where there's some vote kind of or signatures, not just the, the independence, if I'm not wrong, uh, so that then people own that these are their real members of parliament. So that kind of thing. A lot uh, of questions for you, Wanjiko. Fo yes. follow, following yeah. up around uh, uh, maybe the model of the EU, do you want a, do you want a confederation? Do you want a federation like uh, America? Those kind of things need to be. And now East Africa is extending from the Atlantic to the Indian. So it's not really about the East, because now when Congo has come into play, and we thank God our president is in Congo, then it changes the whole dynamic. And I thank, I am happy because if you look at all the regional economic uh, communities in Africa, ESC is the best. In fact, it's much better than ECOWAS. I'm even surprised to hear that there was a, 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 a legislature in 1948. Yeah, 1948. I, I thought it's, it's a creature of 1975. There were three Africans, one yeah. from Kenya, one from Tanzania, and one from Uganda. Mm. Now, and EU, was modeled after it was actually modeled after, 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 after the yes, yeah. East African community. Mm. Yes. So we, we go backwards. We go and move ahead. And we go backwards. <laughs> I tell you why we go backwards. <laughs> I tell you why we go backwards. Could, could, could we just hold on why we go backwards? Okay. Because I wanted to hear from Fala <laughs> that uh, before we come to Wanjiko, all these legislations you say that they are fronted towards uh, you know Parliament or to Parliament's plate and they never really even debated. Mm -hmm. So uh, what will be the onus of the current, maybe, parliament? And here we have the speaker uh, who can tell us why these legislations or what some of these uh, legislations that passed from the East African Assembly are not steamrolled, you know, within the constituents yeah. uh, parliament in the East African region. And also maybe, Debal, yeah. maybe one of you can help us. Uh, how, how, how does it link now with the whole structure of government? Maybe it's, is it a good point for me also to take a short break so that you don't start, then I cut you off. Uh, we take a short break right now. We're due for that short break uh, just to pay our bills. And uh, this is uh, what is on the front pages of uh, the dailies or the little cartoons that we're discussing. First of the Iala, as you can see, we have Winnie there. And uh, she's pulling the, of course, the big shoes of the Odingas. Also, what is happening to Azimio right now and Kenya Kwanzaa? You can see. Uh, the big ship there uh, with uh, some of his uh, boats on the sides. I don't know how they normally call them, that, uh, the, 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 the side boats there. Azimio is cut into pieces right now with the Jubilee piece now heading towards Kenya Kwanzaa. Is that so? And we've seen what is on the front page of the Daily Nation this morning that uh, Ruto is plotting to take full control of parliament. Wing the Jubilee members. We'll also hear from the Jubilee members here as well if that is true. Also, another shall revisit moment is awaiting the Cherera 4, that is the IBC and the full commissioners. The debate right now is whether that day, which is Thursday, will materialize because some members of the Azimio side are saying they did not agree on Thursday as to being the day when we'll have the petitioners appearing before the JLAC in the National Assembly. We shall be discussing this and much more here on the morning prime you're watching siasa fiesta we'll take a short break we'll circle back with more